Hello, everyone, and welcome to another presentation of the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute, PBBI, from California State University, Fresno. And uh, of course, this is a part of our spring 2022 lecture series uh, for uh, this semester, where we have had uh, basically about uh, two uh, to three different events per week, and we're going to continue. We're going to slow down a little bit as we get closer to a spring break, and then, of course, uh, we will have finals at uh, Fresno State and the end of the semester, mid-May, but we will continue with a summer program as well. We're very excited about today's uh, presentation. Uh, we have uh, had uh, Jackson Nichols with us uh, here last semester uh, to talk about his book, The Festa, uh, that uh, we will be speaking about a little bit, and you can see it there on the screen on the lower left side. The Festa, A Celebration of Faith, a wonderful book, a uh, hardcover, beautiful book, uh, very, very well done, a cloth cover, and really, really uh, something that you should consider getting as a um, as a memoir of the Portuguese presence in uh, throughout California, certainly of the festas, and something that can be uh, on your coffee table is where I would advise you to put it, because it's a beautiful book on your coffee table. So when you have your family and friends over, and you're sitting around chatting, uh, they can look and uh, learn of those who aren't of Portuguese background about festa, a celebration of faith of the Portuguese American presence here in, of course, the state of California. But today we're having a Jackson here for a, a, a second presentation and uh, a bit of a different uh, outlook. It's still around the festa. It's still around the idea of the Portuguese uh, uh, building identity and uh, sharing uh, and their traditions, uh, not only amongst themselves with other ethnicities as well. And that is around the bullfights, which are part of the festa. Uh, you cannot have a bullfight without a festa. Uh, and uh, also, um, it is uh, indeed in a specific part of the bullfight uh, uh, in California, the Portuguese bloodless bullfights in California, which is the uh, furcado, which is quite unique to the Portuguese culture. Jackson, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. No, thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. And um, so let's have a conversation about this. Uh, we're going to watch uh, bits and pieces of the documentary that you put forth. You uh, actually had it uh, premiere at the Carnegie uh, Arts Center, where you have your exhibit in Turlock here just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Um, but uh, tell me a little bit uh, before we share the documentary with those following us, um, what, of course, you started photography, you started taking pictures, as, uh, as you mentioned, uh, last semester, when we had the talk with you and Diane, about, uh, you know, about 30 years ago or so. And, um, and then, of course, what, what turns you into the, uh, to the furcados? I mean, the, the bullfights are popular amongst Portuguese, but they're not very popular sometimes amongst the American population. Uh, what turns you into this, uh, this unique uh, creativity of the Portuguese uh, bullfights because it is, as I said, exclusive to the Portuguese because in Spain and parts of France, uh, they no longer exist that much. And in, in, in Mexico, a couple other Latin American countries, they kill the bull and in Portugal, they don't, and they have the frucados instead. So how did you come to this? I, uh, I went to my first bullfight in 2009. It was in Thornton. It was a Saturday afternoon bullfight. And I had heard that they had bullfights in association with the uh, Festus before, but I really wasn't interested that much in it. And they were usually Monday nights and mm -hmm. I was working, so I couldn't make Monday night. But Saturday, I decided to go ahead and go to one. And then uh, one of the other uh, uh, photographers actually invited me down into the Trencheta and because uh, I knew him from photographing the Festus. And uh, I was fascinated with the whole thing. They had the matadors. And just watching that dance with the matador and the bull, it was like it was like ballet. It was so I was immediately hooked. And uh, but the thing that was the most curious were the fracados because everything else made sense. I could understand, you know, the caballeros fighting the bull from horseback and the matadors, of course. But the fracados were just crazy, you know. <laughs> it's like they get out there and they get knocked around like bowling pins, and uh, you know, trying to grab a bull. And I didn't understand it, so I went to a few more bullfights, and then I I was introduced to some of the forcados and um, and then I went to one of their practices 
And I really wanted to learn more about what there was. And the more I learned, the more I realized that it was like, it was a sport, it was an art form. There was, there was specific positions and responsibilities for each one of those positions. There was a strategy to it. And it wasn't as random as it looked like in, in the ring to the untrained eye. So um, I decided that I wanted to uh, photograph these more. So I went to some more practices. Then when uh, Michael Lopes said that he was starting a new group, he was forming a whole new Forcato group. And I go, I had already known him from previous uh, bullfights. So I go, Michael, if you ever start one up, I want to document this from the very beginning. And that was in 2015 when they first started. So um, I went to every practice. I, I basically videotaped them when they were still discussing it at a party one time. <laughs> and then from then on, I, I went to all the practices. I videotaped all the practices all the way up to their first bullfight. And that's the video that I produced. So um, it took about, I think it was from December or January of 2015 through August of 2015 um, was the, the time frame of this video. And that was, that was the course of, of recruiting and training and preparing for their first bullfight. So you've got a documentary and you've got a documented, not just this uh, documentary, which is about, I believe, about 40 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm sure you've got uh, uh, a few more minutes of B-roll and, and of all of the different uh, discussions that are going on. So yes. um, and you have, of course, all of this documented. So it's actually uh, a full documentation in video and in pictures of how a group of Fukado was formed in California, which has never been done. I mean, the Fukados have existed, but not with not the documenting from day one. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I wanted to to document was not only how they they perform, but what the different positions mean. And so during the practices, I sort of focused on on what the training was going on as well and, and how to train for the different positions. So, so that if it, ever, if it ever went away or if, if it changed, I wanted to document, you know, sort of what the Fakatas are all about and the, and the reason for each of the positions. And, and so there's quite a bit of extra uh, of uh, video that I haven't included in the documentary. But, I'm uh, sure, yeah, I know how I, it there is. Are, there are plans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Uh, including once, including once we have everything out there, doc, uh, maybe archiving it at Fresno State. I just want to get that would, again. Okay, that would be great. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, because uh, the raw footage sometimes is important to have it archived at a place that it's going to be there forever. Um, yes. and we'll talk about that. But um, let's watch a little bit of that of what folks in uh, Turlock watched at the Carnegie Arts Center. And by the way, uh, before we go to that, your exhibit that includes, of course, the Frucadus and includes, of course, the Festish, um, the exhibit is still going on and it's going on until the end of April or close to the end of April, correct? Yes. Okay. So folks can still go to the Carnegie Arts Center to see the exhibit uh, when they're opened, of course. They can okay. also pick up the book there. That's right. And they can pick up the book there. Uh, and and we'll show also where they can order online too. So um, for now, let's go ahead and uh, let me uh, put on a little bit. I should tell folks that there is a little bit of um, profanity. I mean, you know, these are young people and they're talking and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, a word slips here and there. They're in their natural uh, am uh, ambience. Uh, uh, before we get to that, uh, to the video itself, the documentary, um uh, uh jackson i mean you were you were taping them in their natural they weren't uh, they weren't performing in other words no, for no, you no, no. you know they were just you were just there in a camera somewhere going from here to there and they're just going on very natural setting correct it yes, seemed like and that was that was the best part about it because i was around so much they started to ignore me i, I could put the camera <laughs> right in their face and they would just ignore it because they were so used to taking and, and, you know, after they get tired of it, then they ignore it, you know, so it's like I was there all the time. So it, it was an ideal position for a for a documentarian to just be invisible like a fly on the wall. Indeed, indeed, that is a, that is a very privileged position. So we'll we'll uh, we'll have the documentary here for a few minutes. As I said, there are a few um, there are there's a little bit of profanity here and there. We will probably. Uh, uh, because of uh, different rules and regulations, we we will uh, lower the sound uh, throughout the documentary, and then Jackson and I will comment, or Jackson will comment on some of the things that some of the questions that I have. I've had the privilege 
of watching the documentary actually twice. Um, and, uh, and so I, I'm kind of familiar with it now and I, and I enjoyed it very much. And I hope all of you here joining us today uh, uh, for this lecture series of the PBBI Fresno State will enjoy it as well. day uh, instinct to kind of want to do this stuff and, and uh, I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie so it runs in that too. Um, there's a number of reasons why I want to do this. Um, the cultural aspect, I love being a part of um, the Portuguese community. Um, I take great pride in being Portuguese. Um, I take great pride in, in helping our Portuguese community and so um, being surrounded by the Portuguese community and carrying out things that our ancestors have done for a long time makes me happy. The reason why I took time off was uh, I just I didn't the situation that I was in I just didn't feel like um, I felt like that that chapter of my life was over so I decided just to walk away and I thought that I was walking away for good but then certain situations appeared and made me realize that um, I wasn't quite done yet that I still have, still have a, a flame a flicker of a flame going on for, for this art form. I'm good. Holy oh, yeah. hell. That's actually kind of cool. That's really rough. <laughs> oh, what do you have, motherfucker? That was a good hit. As a father, you know, you really don't want your kid to put himself at that kind of risk. Um, as Michael's father, I, I know him real well. I didn't think that he had what it takes to be a good squad, but he's turned out to be a very good squad. Maybe it's the stage that I'm at in my life. I wouldn't recommend anyone taking on that kind of responsibility. Uh, but he's young. Donald, Frankie Silvera, Donald Malta, they decided that they want to do a group. The main thing is, is, is grabbing bulls, doing it right, uh, being good at it. But I think that they have some ideas of some things that they would like to see done differently. Bem, importante que as mãos aqui 
Oh, so you're natural, bro. So uh, as we as we look at this, uh, Jackson, um, that uh, that mechanical bull has always uh, been fascinating to me. But let's listen to to Michael here. After I've I've come through it, so um, that was another. That goes back to another reason why we started the group was because we wanted something to come back to, um, something that once you're done and you're out, no matter where you're at, you're in another state, you know, and you want to come back and see something that you helped start and be welcomed back, it's there. So the mechanical bull, tell us a little bit about this. This is something that they practice with. I mean, the... Uh, um, I've, uh, 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 and hopefully Michael will also join us, but, um, uh, this is most practices entail that, correct? Yeah. It's called a Torina. Mm -hmm. And, um, basically that was made by one of the, uh, um, another Forcato. He's also, you know, he does construction kind of stuff, uh, fabrication. And so he put that together and they, they all, they're all very similar Two wheels. It, it's the closest thing you can get to actually, uh, you know, practicing with a bull. So it's got the horns on it. So you can practice getting on the head and it push three guys push it. So it, it has quite a punch to it. And, um, and that's basically how they practice. And they, and it can pick up some speed as, as oh, we can yeah. see there. Oh yeah. 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 This, this is pretty funny. This was, uh, uh, one of the, uh, I guess a cousin or something that, uh, came and, and was wanted to just try it out. And, and so, but yeah, it, uh, it can pack quite a punch with three guys pushing it. It's, it's pretty heavy. Ah, indeed. And so, uh, so three guys normally push it and they, and they try to pick up some speed. Is that what they try to do? Yeah. Uh, as we look here, they're, they're a little bit distant, uh, from, on the, um, they're a little bit distant from the, from, from, from where the first, uh, the, the captain or the leader of the Frucado is going to be the first one grabbing it. And so it seems like, uh, they are going to be, um, uh, a little bit, uh, um, they, they pick up some speed in order to have that kind of, uh, of an impact that a, a bull would have. Am I to assume that correctly or, or yeah, what's and, the reason? It, it's also, um, because you don't, in the arena, the bull has quite a bit of running distance before he reaches you. And it gives the, the lead for Kato time to reverse with the bull. That's a very um, special sort of talent that you, you develop and that you really need to have because you don't take, you don't just stand there and take the bull. Now watch how he'll re he reverses. And then, and, and so that's, that helps um, lessen the impact of the bull on the first, on the lead guy. And okay. so you need that extra distance so you can sort of gauge, you know, where you're going to grab on. And it also helps the second guy to also understand where he needs to be, not too close, not too far away. And so, like I say, there's positions for all of these, uh, these participants. And, and, but that lead time is, is, you know, part of the practice. Let's listen to Michael a little bit more. So basically when I was younger, I used to go to the bullfights and I used to watch uh, the Suicide Squad guys go out there and do their thing. And I never knew exactly what it was until I got a little bit older. And uh, it seems like we're something of a dying breed. The, it's, it's like, it's an art form. I like it. It's, uh, there's a lot to it. First, I thought it was just a bunch of dumb Portuguese in a line, you know, trying to get a bull. But there's a lot to it. Uh, like I said, it's like an art form to me. It takes a lot of honor, courage, and uh, all the stuff like that. I enjoy that very much. I don't expect too great things to happen this year. It's just starting out. But with years to come, it's to make, you know what I mean, one stone is part of building a building, you know what I mean? It's You just take it stone by stone. And, just keep going but it could it could go something it could go into something big or it could, just, it could just be something small like i said i've been doing it for nine years and you make a lot of good friends um and where they become almost like brothers to you uh, so there's that aspect of it just the the family bonding that you get uh, every week you know going to a, a practice it's like a family uh, dinner right and, and it helps that we, that we cook out at practice too so so we do get to share meals with each other and and drinks with each other and, and laughs. Um, so there's that aspect of it. Oh, turn that slow for a second.
And so uh, one of the things that uh, they, they talk about is, of course, the the, 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 the the getting together every week. I mean, as you said, you attended pretty much all of these uh, practices in the beginning when they were forming the group. And yeah. so uh, there's this built of camaraderie that uh, that is very important, especially because then, uh, I mean, they're going to they they have to have each other's back when they get in the bullet. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and so uh, yeah, this, there, this, this kind of camaraderie kind of, is important for the building up of the relationship. Yeah, there was always some kind of a meal or something afterwards. It's, it's kind of an enticement to make sure everybody comes to practice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Portuguese thing, yes. <laughs> and it's interesting how they're doing all the cooking themselves. It seems like there's nobody else cooking for them. I oh, mean, no, no, yeah, of, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it's kind of a joint venture there with, uh, 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 of it all. Um, the, the young man there first that said, you know, that, who knows what's it's going to be built into. So in the beginning, when they're, you know, just building the group, uh, it seems like they were, they weren't sure where this was going to go. Well, it's, it's, um, they're a new group. So, um, more experienced groups get to get, uh, signed up for more bullfights. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know because they're a new group. They weren't sure how many bullfights they would get. They got one the first year. Um, and then as they build a reputation, um, then they'll get more bullfights. But in the beginning, they just weren't sure how big it would get, whether they would, you know, develop into a really good team and get more bullfights. So, so it's kind of based on reputation. So they had no reputation yet. So, Right. Do most of these young men that we see here in the beginning, did most of them that uh, sign up for the group, did they stay with it, uh, stay with it for the first until the first performance or were there, yeah. Yeah, were there were any dropouts that you yeah, know they of? Did. And there, there are some that started that are still going now. Some others have, have dropped out. Some others have picked it up. So there's, it's kind of always a flux. Um, some people age out, you right. know, some, some of the guys, you don't, you know, it's, it's probably like football in a way where you don't, you don't carry a long career, but, uh, um, and then, and the idea is always to be recruiting new members, getting that young blood in there and uh, so that it can carry on. And, and all of these practices seem, as from what I'm looking here, they're done in a, in a farm, in a dairy uh, 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 property. That's right. Some, some places uh, get pretty elaborate. Um, one of the practices, the practice arenas um, that they started going to in the beginning was uh, set up as basically a practice arena. There are other ar arenas. Um, at private ranches that, you know, are very elaborate, you know, and um, they're made for like practicing for forcados, but they also have a uh, Torada Cortes there. So mm -hmm. um, they're kind of purpose built for that one thing, basically. So, but a lot of them don't have any uh, grandstands or anything like that. They're just for private use. Sure, sure. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, it seems that there's, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of dedication. Uh, it's not something that you can get into and just say, well, I'll only, you know, a lot of times with some uh, things that one volunteers for, uh, you say, "Well, I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna go to practice maybe once uh, every three weeks or once a month." With this, you kind of have to have uh, some commitment. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you know, over the course of a se of the summer or a winter, when you're not when you're not uh, doing any practice or you know, facing any bulls, having any right. bull fights, um, you've got to get ready for it. It's not something you just step up and do. So. Um, Usually, once the bullfight season starts, and you've had a bullfight, a few bullfights under your under your belt, maybe you have a, a you know a practice once a month. But it's basically if you if the team knows each other and they're up up to speed, um, and they've had a few, three, a few bullfights, um, they have less practices. But mm -hmm. in in the off season, when you're sort of preparing. Um, then you start having practices every week or every other week, as often as you can, as, as often as you can get enough guys to show up to, for a practice. Sure, sure. And so you were basically driving from the Bay Area to the Valley uh, just about almost every week to document this. Yeah, every Thursday night, I think it was. <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday night, yeah. Yeah, it, so. I made it for but a journey. I, 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 it was a documentary. I just had to do it. Yeah, it was just, there was, I really wanted to do it. Indeed. Let's... Uh, Let's listen to a little bit more of this preparation here. I mean, the fear part and the, the adrenaline part and the nervousness, I think that's part of the reason we're all here. You know what I mean? That's kind of that's the, the breed we are, I guess. It's a rush. It's a rush. The rush is what gets you real good hard. 
after that first bull, it's hard not to go back. So uh, the morning of the bullfight here, they're getting, uh, it seems like they're getting all of their uniforms. They're, you see someone uh, uh, polishing a sh uh, a boots or shoes. And so it's, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they do all this from beginning to end. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a way to sort of uh, uh, cut through the nerves because they, mm -hmm. they've been thinking about it for days and uh, losing sleep at night. And uh, this is the morning of the bullfight. So they're all pretty anxious. They're all pretty nervous. Donald mm -hmm. uh, uh, fights his nerves by polishing his shoes. He'll polish his own shoes. He'll polish anybody else's shoes that's around just to sort of, you know, cut through some of those, the nervousness. So there's, it's, uh, I mean, it's something that they do, uh, uh, in other words, um, for lack of a better word, to, to, to keep busy so they don't just, you know, think always about, you know, that special moment that's going to come, you know, when they grab the bull. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and 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 it's uh, they're they're at someone's house. There it seems like I mean they're they're not yet at the arena. They're just at someone's house, all together, kind of uh, probably uh, uh, whether it's uh, you know talking about bulls or something else. But it's a way for to, to build that special bond and that special relationship. Yeah, that's right. And if yeah, they have the day to sort of sit around and be nervous and then in the afternoon they go and then they dress out and then uh then they arrive at the bull ring so the, the bull fight i think was at seven o'clock so so they were at the bull ring maybe six o'clock so five o'clock are dressing out so they have until like four o'clock to sort of hang around and and just kind of relax try and let the nerves sort of run off a little bit and and sort of just get together and and you know not think too hard about anything <laughs> Yeah, because uh, because I'm I'm sure that when they get and I believe that there's a there's a there's one aspect there that's one of the the young men says when they get you know when they get in the trinchera and then they 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 do that jump uh, it's like uh, well right now it becomes real did you as a documentarist were you able to see their expressions at that particular moment and and how it, it they probably changed. Yeah, yeah. When when they go over the wall, um, they're all business. They, everybody knows at that point what they need to do. They've got a plan. They've been watching the bull because they watch the bull very closely uh, when when it's you know with the horse with the caballero, because they want to see how it will react. Okay, the so they're they're not just sitting somewhere. They're they're paying attention to what goes on before they get in the arena. Yeah especially with their bull, the bull that they're going to face after the right. caballero is done with it. They're watching all the moves. And that's when when uh, the captain is deciding who's going to go up front because different uh, uh, league guys have different styles. They're, they're you know, good on, on, you know, for different kinds of bulls. So he will pick his team after he's observed the, the bull um, in the arena. So mm -hmm. he's not sure who's going to go, how, how, what the lineup is going to be until he's seen that bull. And then, then he'll pick the final lineup. And then when they go over the wall, everybody knows what they need to do. And they just go out there and they want to do it on the first try. Um, that's, that's the most successful because you never want to, you don't want to, you try not to have to go back to a bull again. You just want to get him on the first try, be successful, and then you're out. And then you're, you know, unless you get another bull, you're done for the night. So, Indeed. And it it seems like uh, they have some fun here with the uh, with with dressing and getting oh, yeah. all themselves all ready. It's a it, there's a ritual to this. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So let's watch for a little bit. And so do they? Uh, do this is a process that uh, takes probably a good uh, an hour or two in the afternoon as they get yeah, ready. Yeah, probably yeah. about an hour. Okay. An hour to dress. And I see they're doing this at a, someone that is uh, at a place that is a uh, bullfight museum, which is quite interesting. Yeah, here in the right. Central Valley. Here in the Central Valley. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, uh, and there are those shoes being polished again. So it's there we go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that is uh, that is certainly part of uh, of the ritual. So um, after they get themselves dressed, as we as we see here, and it's. Uh, uh, you know, and when when Michael uh, gets here, we'll talk a little bit about that aspect as well. Um, it seems like they again they help each other out. If you don't know how to tie a, 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 a tie in a, in a, in a yeah. uh, on a tie, then someone knows how to do it and will do it for you. So it, yes. it's again building that uh, special bond between all of them. Yes, exactly. Indeed. Okay. 
One bull at a time. And so this year, uh, and then we're just going to cut a little bit of this time because there's a little bit of choice words here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but basically, it's kind of a pep talk. That's uh, basically oh, yeah, what it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, so, and there's several rookies here. Mm -hmm. So he just he's telling them basically, you know, you, what you've got to do is you, you got to do your job, take a hit. Um, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing you can do. And uh, uh, because it, it once you once you take a hit, it, it, you're kind of like that's the worst that's going to happen, you know. So then um, you will, you know, a lot of that fear will go away, and then you'll really focus on what you need to do. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's it's just they're just talking about what you yeah. need to do and and building camaraderie. Right, and don't uh, you know just uh, be there for each other. I think it was uh, one of the things. Yeah, be there for work each other. Work as a team. Work yeah, team. work as a team, and 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 indeed that important part that was stressed by a couple of them when I heard it, which is uh, that important thing of take a hit. I mean, that's uh -huh. kind of hard to hear. You know, take a hit, take a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> yeah, and I think the idea is is that your natural reaction when you see a boat coming towards you is you're going to want to get out of the way. Yeah, but now that, you, that's what you I would know, do. That's what it, I would do. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and because that's, that's part of it. Every, every team must, every team member must be willing to take a hit. They show you how to do it. So it really won't hurt you. But I mean, the natural instinct is to sort of step okay. out of the way. Lord so. look over us today. They have a Help prayer. Strength, yes. willing, everybody devote yourself to each other, to him. Let us be safe. Amen. 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 Okay. Lisa, Lisa, go, go ahead. Right. Bendito seja o luz do dia, bendito seja quem queria, bendito seja filho da Virgem Maria, anjo me aguarda, guardai minha alma pronta este dia. Amém. Amém. All right, Luso on three. Luso. One, two, three. Luso! Luso! Oh, boys. I'm really impressed where uh, where this group is going. I can't wait to actually have us suited up. Everybody all suited up at one time and going out there with some real real animals. I'm excited about that. What made you come out now? Uh, I just have uh, some something to feel fulfill inside of me to accomplish this goal of mine to grab the bull. And so the the preparation continues. Now they're now they're basically at uh, or outside of the ring, right? They're, yes. they're at the location where uh, the event is going to take place. Right, right outside of Stevenson Arena. Yeah. Okay, Stevenson Arena. There's uh, most of these arenas are actually in Central California. Uh, there, there's I think one in La there's one in Artesia, and so here they're kind of doing the same thing as they get together to uh, be ready for the uh, for for the, for the bullfight. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and, uh, and, and the, uh, uh, what did they, t what, did, what did they tell you after the event? I mean, the, after the very first one bullfight, you remember their, of course, their very first one, uh, I'm sure that, uh, they were nervous. There's, there were some pros here, Michael and Donald and a couple others, but there are some rookies, as you said, um, how do they feel after they grabbed the first bull? Do you remember what they, they kind of shared with you? They're ecstatic, you know, uh, okay. especially if they're successful. Uh, it, it's like this great relief, this great joy. Um, there's a lot of celebration in the Trincheta, and uh, yeah, they're really happy. Yeah, they're really happy. Yeah, indeed, indeed. You would think that they would be. Uh, so let's listen to f a little bit more. A lot to you before a bullfight, especially the first one. So it seems like things are being checked out and making sure yeah. that everybody's okay, making sure that everybody is up for it. You see that the ambience is a lot more somber here now. Yeah, exactly. They're they're starting to focus. They're really starting to get focused in. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, it's becoming very real now. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you can tell by their faces that right now, I mean, you're excited, but by the same token, uh, you're, if there's any concern, it's showing in some of the faces. They're becoming... Yeah. They're becoming, especially the rookies, are becoming more and more involved in it. It'll yes. get really bad the week of, but uh, everybody's. I think we're gonna be all right as long as everybody. As long as everybody keeps their mind straight and relaxes. Everybody's gonna be nervous, but uh, after you grab one, the, fir the first bull of the night's always the worst. Then you get your calm down. Once, once we get a feel, see what everybody does on their first bull fight, we'll know more or less what the guys are about. But I'm not even worried. I think I think we're pretty stout. Everybody's. I'm glad the rookies are excited. Which, as long as they're anxious for it, we're gonna be all right. But uh, yeah, just we're on the clock now. 
Just waiting. It's almost go time. Bring the heat. Got to get in the zone before the bullfight, you know, on the way to the bullfight, and then you go to dress out, and that's when the jitters really start. Then you start hearing the bullfight music and the people and the smells. And I think that Michael has joined us already. So, Michael, welcome. Hey, Michael. Can you hear us? Yeah, I think you're on mute, Michael. You're on mute, uh, Michael. Okay, sure. Okay. We'll wait one, one second. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll have Michael join us here as uh, as we look at uh, at uh, at the bullfight and uh, at the preparation for. Um, for the uh, uh, for the 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 pega. When we get Michael on, I'd like to ask him how, uh, or just think of the question: um, What does one feel at this particular moment? Chops wanted to go second. I mean, wanted to go third. Donald likes Chops going second. I'm going to go talk to Chops. Thank So Jackson, you had uh, you had special privilege to be down here and uh, and and taping all of this, of course. Yeah, basically they they uh, I was one of the group. <laughs> I just don't dress out and I don't sure, put sure. Room. And you but, had a camera and you had a camera. Yeah, I went everywhere they did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You were kind of uh, and and that's the secret to doing this because, as you said, it's kind of after a while they kind of ignored you because yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you were just have there. A camera in their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were you you were just there, so they kind of learned to live, and they were at their natural uh, setting uh, uh, with you because uh, they had already 
you know, knew you were one of them, basically, in that yes. aspect. Yeah, yep, indeed. Yep. Indeed. So I'm sure this is a, a very um, a special moment because it's uh, it's uh, it's just about ready to happen, and it's uh, it seems like Michael's uh, giving his last pep talk there. It's all of them and getting everybody uh, ready for this. Uh, what is a uh, indeed a very special moment in the Portuguese style bullfights. But I try to uh, anticipate, you know that tell myself that for the most part it's going to go fine you're going to go out there the first time it's going to be pretty easy you know why get yourself worked up that's the way i try to look at it So, uh, Jackson, um, all of this, of course, uh, seems to, you know, you've cut, uh, of course, uh, different parts, but it seems like uh, this is a very tense moment. I can tell in their faces. I can tell how they're looking, about what they're talking. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of a, you know, uh, a very, very tense moment for them because all that they've worked for now it gets to put in practice and it happens in such a, you know, a quick amount of time. This is Michael picking out the members of the team. Before okay. this time, before they really saw the bull, mm -hmm. um, everybody had a possibility of going in. But now it's getting real. Now he's picking, Donald is the, the head guy, the lead okay. man, and then he's picking out his team. So when he went down and talked to the, the other two at the end of the line, they were going to be the back three. And, and so and now it's beginning very real. And people okay. that are going in are really um, trying to get together now, get their head in the right place. And... Uh, um, prepare themselves. Well, if you were lucky enough to get picked to go up front, then it's just that's a whole nother level. You're already thinking about, you know, what the bull's doing. You're worried about that. You're not so much worried about the people behind you because, you know, you're comfortable with them, but you're looking at each other, you know, you're making sure everybody's communicating, everybody's on the same page. It's tough before you go over the wall. That's like the pivot point. And then after you jump in, everything goes quiet. It's like when you're in the trinchetta just before you jump out, you hear everybody talking around you and, and even people in the stands and uh, what's gonna happen, you know. But as soon as you jump over that wall, it seems like everything goes quiet and it's just you, the guy next to you, and the bull. Yeah. <laughs> So, Michael, what does one feel when one does that jump? Oh, it's just silence. Um, you know, it, uh, calmness comes over you and, and uh, you trust in yourself to, uh, to perform to your abilities, to, to your knowledge, and let your body react to what you've been preparing for um, for several hours now at that point in time. Sure. Let's uh, let's look at this one here, and then we'll we'll continue our conversation. It's always a very special moment in the Portuguese bullfight. This is what defines the Portuguese bullfight. You said that it's silence, uh, Michael, and, and basically um, 
but is there there's no there's really I, and I know that you've done what uh, what Donald did there which is you know face the ball be the be the lead um I mean that impact uh once that happens I mean there's got to be something that you think well this may be the last time I'm here <laughs> this is maybe the time I'm going to face my creator I mean it, all these thoughts you know uh, may go through I mean they certainly would go through my head <laughs> well, it's happening pretty fast. And I right. would say that, yeah, you're probably feeling that it, that's what's driving you to it's the fighter, the fight or flight moment, right? That you've, I feel like I've heard that in um, a lot of chaotic situations, whether it's, you know, skydiving or in um, war or physical activity, your body gets into a fight or flight moment. Um, and that's, that's what that is. That's the adrenaline running um and of course your nerves and your brain is telling you that uh yeah. that this could be the end mm -hmm. um, but sure, sure. that's definitely not what's crossing my mind in my subconsciously maybe and that's what's driving my body to react but in your mind you're um you know you've been here before and, and you're telling your brain otherwise Indeed. And, um, and so um, let's continue this conversation. And, and first of all, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it very much uh, on behalf of Fresno State and, and the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute. Um, so um, and we've been watching the entire uh, uh, documentary up until now, and it's uh, coming up in the last few minutes. And, and so I wanted to um, ask you a little bit more in detail. How did, uh, how did, what what made you want to start a group? And it's wonderful that uh, Jackson was there because we have now this uh, great documentary. And besides the documentary, as he was explaining to us, we also have uh, literally dozens and dozens of other hours that are recorded that hopefully we can archive because uh, one never knows where the tradition may be 50, 75 or 100 years from now and we need to archive it. So um, how did you let's take, start from the beginning, actually, before you started the group? What what led you into uh, uh, become a furcado? It's a family tradition. Uh, it's not a family tradition. But, okay. Uh, for, first off, uh, you so know, you the, you began the tradition yourself, right? Yeah, first, <laughs> first generation, um, okay. first family member. Uh, so first off, thank you for having me. I apologize for the uh, couple minutes of technical difficulty. Sure. I, sh I should be able to handle that better at, at night. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it started out just as probably a curiosity thing as a child, a young child, um, just going to bullfights. I grew up, um, you know, five, five minutes away from this arena um, mm -hmm. on a dairy and uh, just always surrounded by the uh, culture, the Portuguese culture. And, and my parents are first generation um, um, or I'm a first generation American. My parents are immigrants. Um, so always involved in, in the culture in general and growing up around, you know, Portuguese people and friends and family and cousins. Um, so always intertwined in some portion of one way or another. Uh, my dad's, one of my dad's best friends was a uh, right there, Eddie, Eddie Souza. Um, and so I don't know, from a young age, I was intrigued by the art and then I never thought, I don't know, at a young age, you're like playing around with it, but never really thought that, you know, that was going to be something I do. Mm -hmm. um, and then in high school, uh, you know, being uh, friends with, uh, at that time, the captain of the Turlock group's son, uh, uh, Georgie Martins, um, mm -hmm. and now actual captain of Turlock group, uh, we were friends at the time, and he mentioned something about his dad having practice out at their place, and my cousin, uh, my dad's cousin, was on the group at that time, um, and so I just, you know, wanting to be cool, uh, thought I'd show up out there as a, you know, a young, whatever I was, junior, <laughs> junior in high school, uh, and showed up out there, and they welcomed me with uh, open arms, and from there, it started a, a true passion and love for, for the art. Uh, I learned a lot from it and just really immersed myself in the culture, the Portuguese culture at that point in time. Uh, felt a, con a bigger connection to, to that Portuguese culture. I learned a lot more. I already knew how to speak Portuguese, but I learned a lot more of the vernacular um, terms around bullfighting and, and it increased my uh, urge to want to learn even more Portuguese, uh, the language and being able to, uh, you know, fully speak uh it was something that drove me, and I think it's it's a credit to uh, 
you know, the passion that I continue to have for, for the Portuguese people, the community, the pride I take in, in being part of the culture. Sure. How did your parents feel about as a, as a high school student uh, joining uh, a Fukado group? Uh, they, since it was your, your, since you were the one that started the tradition of the family. So how do they feel yeah, about that? They, Especially maybe your mom. Yeah. They uh, were not stoked about it at first, um, but they didn't think, I, I feel like they got to a point where they're like, well, this is going to burn out. It's going to fizzle out. Um, and it never fizzled out. And unfortunately, I guess for them, it only grew. Hey, sure. I have my young son here. That's, that's fine. Him. We understand. That's, <laughs> that's part of growing a family. Good yeah. To see you for, so, <laughs> to see you for having him there. That's, that's thank wonderful. You. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, they were, they were not pleased. I think that they mainly not that they were mad, but um, just nervous, you know, mm -hmm. sure. now having sure. a child, I could just imagine, you know, sure. that yeah. and, and them not being involved. Uh, you know, my dad followed Portuguese bullfights was always around those animals. And he had, uh, I would say some sort of passion for, for bullfighting to a certain extent, not to the level I took it to. Um, but they don't know the insides and the outs, uh, of how comfortable you really feel down there. Mm -hmm. Um, from an outsider's view, you think that, man, you guys are just getting thrown to the to the wolves out there and um really the more you learn about it the more you learn about the art and each position in the lineup and and the trust that's formed among a group amongst a group of guys uh it doesn't feel so i don't know how to say it so dangerous i mean mm -hmm. we know it's dangerous in the back of our mind we know that things can happen but we also feel very comfortable doing what we're doing i mean i got to a point where I felt really, really almost to, to a negative point where I felt very confident going out there. And, and there was definitely times where I, I would be humbled. Sure. Uh, well, that's what I was going to ask you. Can you, can one be too confident that, uh, that lets it, his guard down a little bit? Is oh, that, is sure, that a possibility? Yeah. I mean, okay. There's, there's, uh, there's hills and valleys throughout mm -hmm. one's career, depending on how long you do it. The longer you do it, the more uh, chance you have to, to get in, find yourself in some of those valleys. Um, and yeah, there was times where, man, you got to have that, <clears throat> that confidence, mm -hmm. um, but there was definitely humbling times. And I think that's one of the most, um, uh, I think important and fun parts about it is that it throws you curveballs and just like life, you have to figure out, okay, how do I get myself out of this? And, sure. and you know, sure. in the direct situation with that specific animal and then going forward to next events, next bullfights, how do I make sure that that doesn't happen again? Or how do I get back to my, what I expect my performance level to be? And uh, I understand uh, from my conversations with Jackson that you guys had the opportunity to take the group uh, uh, outside of California. So you, you had the opportunity to go to the Azores, was it? Yeah. To the island of Tercida. Yeah. And I mean, we actually expanded it out to uh, Colorado. We went to one event out there okay. um, back in 2016, 2017, somewhere around yeah, there. 2017, maybe. 2017. Yeah. yeah. We went out to Denver, Colorado, which is not somewhere you would expect to, to be taking the Portuguese culture, but we did. And um, it was a fun event uh, put on by, by my friend, um, uh, Adam Rocha. Adam Rocha. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, so um, how and, was it though? to uh, grab the bull in, the, uh, in, in kind of the home turf of Terceira. I mean, you know, it's a, yeah. you know, uh, how, how, how would you compare that to, uh, to, to, to the valley or to any other part? Yeah, I mean, I think I would have been overwhelmed um, had that been my first time going overseas. But being on the Turlock group for, you know, seven or eight years, I had gone, I had the experience to go to, you know, San Jorge, <laughs> Uh, Graciosa, Lisboa, um, Terceira in 2010, and then back to Lisboa in 2011. So I, I had gone overseas a lot. I felt very comfortable there. I knew what, what it was about there and um, just really enjoyed the experience this time around in 2019. Obviously, there was an added level of pressure because I was in front of the group. Um, but it was something that I felt extremely proud of each time I got to go over there. Um, you know, it's, it's a di it's different atmosphere. It's, it's a people there that are paying for their ticket, their valuable, you know, uh, income, their, their expendable income, I guess, is going towards that ticket. Whereas here we've gotten used to a lot of tickets being, um, given out 
um, in relationship to the feshes here. So that adds a different dynamic because when you're paying with your own earned money, um, you go there with a different appreciation for the event. Um, and you go there to watch the art and you, you're quiet and you appreciate it and you take on a different, um, it's, it's just a totally different atmosphere. Uh, you can tell the, uh, different appreciation for the sport, not that it's not appreciated out here. Um, but it's a different level of appreciation there. Um, and then the amount of pride that I had getting to grab in that arena back in 2010 and then 2019 with the, with Luso, um, I mean, it's hard to explain. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure. It's, it's sure it's one of the highs that I've the highest highs I felt in, in the art in the 15 years that I got to do it. Um, you know, so you, I, I did get to grab in Lisbon twice uh -huh. and in, which they call the, the cathedral of, Correct. of the art of the Fraquad. Mm -hmm. um, and Kumpkin has its dynamics and its atmosphere and it's beautiful and I love it. And I hope I go back there one time, not one time, but many more times to, to visit as a, a spectator. Uh, but being there as a Fraquad was another level as well. But I get what I say, and I don't mean it in a derogatory manner to Kumpkin or to take away from Kumpkin, because I, I mean, that's the highest level of being a Fraquad is going to Kumpkin. But for me, there was a little more emotional connection going to Tresada. Because right. uh the homeland, it, it, you know, it's the island that my parents are from, my dad's family is from, and my mom's uh, family is also from the Azores as well. And so, you know, being there in Tresada, it's it's a different appreciation as well just a, a love and yeah. a passion and a pride yeah and and you feel of course the i'm sure there's a Fukado if uh, if one who attends as i have in the past feels that way i'm sure Fukado, uh, uh feel will feel that exactly what you said that um folks are there i mean it's total silence uh, where you don't see that in a, in a bullfight here because as you said there's people that get free tickets and you just go for the atmosphere for the party you know to, to have a couple of drinks with your friends and to see people you don't see you know so it's a it's a little bit more of a social event here where there it's a social but when the bullfight begins when from beginning to end and then you better not socialize because well, people don't want you to <laughs> it's funny there's so much i could talk about towards that but like uh i would say the bullfights here are almost comparable to uh, as far as the atmosphere around the spectators mm -hmm. it's almost like a there in right. yeah <laughs> that's a very good <laughs> comparison yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's also funny because you know we do get a lot of immigrants that come from here and go to Tsheda and watch bullfights in Tsheda and go to the arena there and they act a hundred percent different than they act here um, sure and it's very interesting because I would wish that they brought that that they learned there or that they see there and that that's how you should be acting, that they should bring that back here. Um, but again, I think that adding that uh, dollar value to the ticket, mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. would drive some of that here. Um, it's, I mean, I, again, I don't mean to uh, bring anybody down, but it's sure. somewhat uh, disrespectful here. Uh, we've gotten a lot better um, here over my time, just, I remember, you know, in the early 2000s, it used to be a lot of laughs and screams and crazy noise going on when the Fraquads were out there. And it's gotten a lot better over the over the time as there's been more Fraquads. You know, it's funny as as there's been more people that you know in the arena, mm -hmm. you're uh, that's another reason for you to stay quiet when it's happening. <laughs> sure, so sure. as the art has grown here, as there's maybe you know now 150 people that have participated in a bullfight or 200, I don't even know what the number would be, right? But a large sum of people that have been Fraquads, they know to be quiet, their family members know to be quiet. So it's gotten quiet here during the Pega, mm. but it's still difficult for the couple age because it's not as quiet. It's, it's not, it's, it's a different atmosphere. Sure. Um, and Indeed. hopefully we continue to evolve and we get somewhere to that point. Yeah. But it, that, that is a big difference there. And it's something that's so cool to be a part of. And, and then just the, the art of the arenas, the, the construction, the architecture, um, the history behind it, you know, our arenas, we've done what we could with them and they're great mm -hmm, arenas mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. in California, but I mean, they're, you're in a bullfighting country, you know, what sure. we call, uh, um, uh, um, right. And, mm -hmm. and so you're there, it's ingrained in, in the culture. It's ingrained in the, uh, political society. It's ingrained in the law. So they are required to have, you know, infirmaries on site. They're required to have, 
you know, chapels in the arena. They're required to have a functioning arena that's able to take care of whatever may come from that bullfight. Whereas here, we try to do what's best, but it's not, you know, we got to do what we can to, to recreate the art, but it's not the. Sure. Not sure. The, not well, yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a friend of mine who from, from, from Tersaida as well. Um, the other I'm from as well. And he, um, a singer there uh, by the name of Carlos Alberto Muniz. And Carlos was saying that he went to a bullfight in Evora, the Evora sister city with Angra and Tersaida. And they did a bullfight, not in the ring, a bullfight in the street, Torada Corta. And he said, and I said, how was it? He says, oh my God, it wasn't worth anything because he said, there's no kolshas, there's no bedspreads in, in the in the windows, there's there's no tashkas, there's not, you know, there's 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 not the greenery that people put on on on, on their home. Um uh, there wasn't, you know, the the so-called uh, fifth bowl, the king to total, where people yeah. go from home to home and 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 snack. And he said, so it was just the bull running back and forth. It, you know, it wasn't the same thing. And, and so it's the same thing with the bullfight. We just try to recreate all we can, obviously. And, that, and that's the same thing here with the Torada Jacorta. They've done as much as they can with it. And it's fun. And it's a way for our culture to get together here and to continue our tradition. Sure. But it's not a Torada Jacorta like going to the right. Asian. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. it's something else. I wish we could do that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I wish that, you know, once a year... We could have a fest. I live here right now in between moving homes, but in the home I'm at right now, I'm, I'm right across the street from the Turlock Ballroom. I wish during their fest here in Turlock that we could let some bulls out on these streets. There's not a lot of road or not a lot of cars coming down these roads. Let's shut them down and, and open it up. You know, that would, that's the atmosphere, right? Sure, and, sure, and, sure, and sure. That, uh, that, they did some of that in Gustine's, you know, it's probably going on a decade now. Um, where they did do it in the streets and stuff, but it, it's different. It's, it's yeah, gotta, yeah, it is different. Mess with what we can. Yeah, and exactly what you said, Michael. It's ingrained in the culture. It's been part of the uh, culture in the island of Tersaida for centuries. So it's not something that's just beginning now. Um, one uh, before I let you go, and, and thank you again, and thanks to Jackson and for all of his work. But before I let both of you go, um, and since you've lived this for such a long time, first of all, I understand that you are no longer. Uh, you've uh, given you've 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 quit uh, not quit you've resigned that's a, that's I guess the best way to call it uh, at a very young age but uh, there's an age for everything and I actually in the piece that uh, the documentary um, I believe uh, was your dad that uh, was interviewed and he said I hope he knows when it's the right time to get, to leave uh, did you, the, so was that a what, how how did you come to that decision because I'm sure it wasn't a good uh, an easy decision for you. I mean, it's a lot of nerves that go into being a part of this and a lot of stress that, you know, goes into an event um, and, and preparing your mind and body to go up front. And, and then it's another level to be captain of a group, um, the stress level of, you know, having to pull the strings and, and orchestrate the event and uh, really, you know, a lot of weight gets shifted on you to make put people in the right decisions. And, um, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I felt like I took the group where I could um a lot of politics involved and the politics can burn burn a man out um sure. and i got to a point where i was tired of the politics i felt like i had given what i could to this uh community mm -hmm. um and that my mind wasn't a hundred percent into it anymore um and i once had a friend tell me that when you start the uh and people would be like well what's a pega no, no. well pega doshala is uh, yeah, yeah. Um, when that starts coming, it's time to uh, uh, clean it up and get out of there while you still can. I've seen a lot of people try to leave um, when it's been too late. I've watched athletes do it in their respective sports. Um, and I was uh, hell bent on not being in that position because I've uh, set my expectations at a very high level for a very long time. And I wanted to leave, um, like they say in Portuguese, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's when I felt like it was time to go. I uh, felt like I could leave it in the hands of the group itself, in the hands of Manuel Cabral, who I feel like is uh, a great squad um, and has a great passion for this. His dad's been involved in the, in the Festa Brava for a very long time. Um, so Manuel's grown up around it. I think that he can take the group to that um, to the next level um, and hopefully break borders with politics and all that stuff. Um, I think a fresh view, a fresh, uh, 
opinion, somebody else in charge, you know, we, we, we do have a board that helps make decisions, but somebody else in the front with different ideas can help evolve the group and take it to the next level, as opposed to making it um, somewhat of a uh, dictatorship or just one person really owning, taking ownership of the, of the group. Uh, we want it to be the members. And, and so I served my term for lack of a better word. Uh, I'm growing my family. I got married, you know, before COVID in 2019. Um, so I already knew that the writing was on the wall. COVID came in um, and it was getting closer to, to wrapping it up. And so when they opened the bullfights back up after COVID, um, I thought long and hard about it, but it was not a decision that I was forced into. It was really a decision that I accepted on my own and felt like it was, uh, it was my goodbye song. My, my time, sure. my time to ride away. Sure. Um, still have a lot of, you know, emotional connection to it and stuff, but I just felt like it's, it's time to go. Um, the other thing too, is being a Prakad, it was a passion. It was a love, uh, an intense love that I had for 15 years, but it's not all or, uh, everything that I'm composed of. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have my professional career. I'm a CTA. Uh, I have my college degree. Uh, I'm a family man. I'm a married man. I'm a, a brother, a son, you know, there's so sure. much more to me than being a father. And sure, sure. so that was part of my life. I hope that I live, you know, a lot more time on this earth to where that'll be a short part of my life that, sure, sure. that I always will take pride in something that I'll always have, uh, to be a part of memories of great memories of, but it's not all of who I am. And I, I think that I, I hope that I still have greater things to accomplish um, than just- Wise, wise choice, wise words for such a young guy. Uh, <laughs> congratulations and congratulations okay. to your parents, obviously for raising such a wise guy. Uh, wise in the good sense, not a wise guy. Wise, <laughs> right. wise, wise in, in Portuguese, sabedoria. Uh, let me ask you one final question and it's a reflective question. Um, as far as the tradition itself, how do you see it in California, uh, Michael? You know, we, we just talked about all the different challenges. Uh, the dairy industry has been the big major supporter of the uh, of the bullfights. I mean, it's been dairymen who have, you know, uh, I should, I guess that the wrong word would be invested because they never saw any return. <laughs> and they spent, you know, uh, many dairymen have spent thousands and thousands of dollars to keep this tradition alive. So how do you see it in California in the next that? 15 or 20 years? I can hear you. I can I can see you. I can hear you. Yeah, you're there. So how do you see it in the next 15 or 20 years or even yeah. longer than that? What, what's your perspective on it? The dairy industry is changing. Uh, folks, uh, of course, uh, have other priorities. Um, so your thoughts, please. Okay. Are you there? Sorry. I, am. I, am. I, I got the, I got the gist of your question. Okay. Um, good. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's uh, man, I could talk about that for so, so long. Um, you know, very thankful for the dairy industry, but the dairy industry has hit um, hard times and um, it's always had ups and downs. And I hope that for all my friends and, and um, family members that are still involved in, in agriculture, I, I have a job that's related to agriculture. Um, I hope that the dairy industry continues to grow and, and do well, but um, it's cannibalized a lot of its own um, to where now it's fewer Portuguese dairies and bigger dairies. Um, and so those, those us relying on the dairies is unfair. It's always been unfair, but now it's not going to be able to, to continue. Um, I think it'll be tough. I think that we're going to have to get to a point where, um, where we can, uh, rely on ticket sales. You know, the mm -hmm. pressure is going to have to come up with other ways to, to raise money and they're going to have to come up with ways to, uh, fund their events not just the bullfights but fund their events and and so um i think that it's going to be difficult I, i'm mm -hmm. not going to lie right it's going to be an uphill battle you're going to have to get the public to start paying for their their ticket i think at, at at a certain point in time um and if it doesn't survive because people don't want to pay for tickets as much as that pains me to say it then you know i'm i'm a capitalist too and so guess what? When things don't survive on their own in the capitalist society, they, they go down. I mean, and so one day maybe, you know, we'll, I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, but I think over the next 15 to 20 years, it'll be um, 
it'll be an interesting time to see where the Portuguese community goes from here. But some of the festivals are getting smarter. Um, they're trying to bring in the younger people. They've turned around, you know, a couple of these festivals have started doing um, uh, blackjack tournaments instead of, you know, or not, not blackjack, sorry, uh, poker tournaments um, instead of the old wits card games that used to get the older Portuguese ladies there. They're trying to get the young people there now. Um, and they're trying to turn around some of these fundraising events and, and all the more power to them because it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, do you see but, the, uh, do you see any uh, possibility of acquiring um, uh, uh, other spectators, other aficionados uh, outside of the Portuguese community? And I'm thinking about the Hispanic community because I think you had a couple of Hispanic members of your group, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I saw a couple of Hispanic names. They maybe have Portuguese or something, but uh, do you think that maybe looking for aficionados outside of the Portuguese community, because we were spread out so, you know, and, and some kids, you know, go away to, you know, to other parts of the state, never come back, et cetera. Uh, is there that possibility of growth as far as the, a paying spectator by looking at other ethnic groups, including the Hispanic community? Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I should clarify. I'm not concerned about the participants. I think that you can always find people to get in. That's the mm -hmm. cool part about the, the, for clouds is that it's brought Americans in, it's brought Hispanics in. It, we don't discriminate. It, you got a pulse and you want to come out and you're crazy enough to do it. And, you know, so that part I'm not as concerned about. It's more of the spectator side. Right, right. Uh, the Hispanic community, I mean, they rent our Portuguese facilities, they rent them and they throw on their events and they pay, you know, 60 to a hundred dollars a ticket to get into these events and you would think man there, there can't be anybody in there no they got that arena they got stevenson arena packed to the gills they get thornton arena packed out um so it's just a different mentality is there a possibility to bring them in yeah there is but it's not the same culture it's mm -hmm. a little different it's harder to get them to come in and then when you do get them to come in they're typically coming in with Portuguese friends. So they're, they're getting used to already free tickets as well. I mean, it's, a, it's a, uh, it's a disease. It's a disease that, that spreads fast. And um, I don't know how you fix it other than, you know, you stop doing it, but these festas to do that, they have to kind of come together to do it. Right. Sure. It can't be, sure. Sure. You can't just have Turlock Fesha do it or just Stevenson Fesha do it or Tracy Fesha do it because guess what? Those Feshas all line up back to back to back. Yeah, so if, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. Tur if Turlock decides that they're going to charge for tickets, the average spectator, I I've always paid for my ticket. I'll pay for my ticket. I'll go. The average spectator is going to say, well, I'm not going to pay $30 a ticket to go to that. I'll go next Monday when it's free you know, or I'll go in two Mondays when it's free. And so if these fetishes don't start to band together um, and, and come up with a plan where they don't, I mean, I think that the dairyman, I should clarify as well, is I think the big donors, they deserve their tickets. You know, if they sure. want, you know, a couple, I mean, they're donating thousands of dollars. So if they want two or three tickets or enough for their family, you know, four or five tickets. But when you, when somebody donates and you turn around and you give them 20 tickets or a or hundred tickets, well, is it really a donation or is it just an exchange for tickets, right? Um, and everybody has their different views on that. I understand that. But I mean, if you just start doing, again, I, I, I'm an accountant. So you just start going back to the numbers. I live by the numbers. And, and if, if somebody donates, you know, $100 and you give them five tickets and the tickets are at $20 a ticket, well, okay, you, yeah. sold, you sold five tickets. There wasn't a donation. So... Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's definitely an uphill battle. I hope that it continues. I think what I see happening is that they'll, they've been dwindling down the, the number of events each year. And I think they'll continue to dwindle down until you get, you know, a handful of festas, maybe four or five a year. Um, and some of the really strong festas keeping it going, but sure, sure. otherwise I think, you know, the days of seeing 20 and 30 events a year. Are right. Done. It's going to be tough. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Well, uh, Michael, I would, I would like to add something. Sure. To you, please do. Briefly, is, um, you know, I, I, I did mention this when Jackson debuted this out here in Turlock at the Carnegie Hall. Um, I, you know, I, I do like to take, I don't get off. I don't get enough time or enough opportunities to thank Jackson enough. Um, uh, and I don't know how many people here are watching, but Jackson, uh, truly does deserve, you know, uh, 
all the thanks in the world. Uh, I'm very grateful for him coming along the last seven or eight years um, and documenting all of this stuff. I mean, like he said, he has hours of footage. He, he did an interview of me uh, a couple weeks after I uh, retired. Um, and so those things may never make it to the public forms. Um, but I know that I, I will get that copy. You <laughs> and, well, and I look I forward one special to it because, for you, Michael. And, and, because, and they, uh, and they need to make it to the public forum because I was just enticing Jackson that, uh, not only the documentary, but also the footage that he has, we have, uh, created an archive at Fresno state, the Portuguese yeah. beyond borders Institute for all history and your interview. We'd love to archive it. And as well as everything else that he has. Because we never know, and uh, and even if they continue and if they flourish, which is what we all want, uh, but we, you know, when researchers, when young Portuguese Americans or any other ethnic group, group students are doing a study on the Portuguese in California, whether it be fifty or sixty or hundred years from now, we want them to have this archive that yeah. they can go and. No, uh, it'll be special. Yeah. I mean, especially yeah. for me, just that interview will be cool because in you know, I see some of the interviews like even this stuff. It makes me like. Uh, well, first off, I hate hearing myself talk. Um, so it makes, we me, all do. It we all makes, do. it makes me blush, but, uh, you know, it's cool to see even seven years ago. I remember that it's fresh in my memory, but to see some of this stuff and to see the, just what went into it, it's, it's already interesting. And I can only imagine, you know, multiply that by a factor of 20 or whatever. Sure. And sure. What sure. And we like don't do today. a very good job as you know, in the Portuguese community haven't done a very good job in archiving our history. Yeah. And so, and, and I guess what I was going with that is that, yeah, that's all great and it's cool. And I would expect that of somebody that is of Portuguese heritage, like myself or you um, or all the Portuguese people around here, but it's taken somebody like Jackson, who's married into the Portuguese community um, to do it. Um, I think it speaks to the Portuguese people, speaks to the Portuguese culture, uh, not just Jackson, but that we have something that is special, something that we take for granted, um, maybe because we're cradle, I'll, I'll borrow a word from the Catholic tradition, right? We're cradle Portuguese people and, and we take advantage, uh, not advantage, we uh, take for granted what's so special of our festas. Um, you know, he's got the beautiful pictures of the festas and, and our bullfights and just our culture in general. And, and so it's cool to be able to attract somebody outside of our culture. Sure. Indeed, and indeed. feel the need to document it for us. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Sometimes it, it takes somebody from the outside to really to really be able to observe it objectively. Yeah, yes. and have a different That's look. True. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And, and and watching this video, I will say it it is a different look. Um, there's things that it was very interesting to see Jackson's point of view from it because it's like, oh, I maybe would have presented that a little differently, or I was thinking differently like this, or whatever. And and uh, the cool part is I had no no control over what he was doing. So it's his views. Uh, it was cool to see. It's a different view. Um, and I thought it was great. Uh, I, I will take one more second to uh, thank uh, thank him, but also apologize to everybody for all the foul language in there. Uh, I, we, we were careful with that. Back, yeah, we were very careful. Okay. Hearing myself back, I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> oh, my, my poor Val would have. Uh, yeah, she probably would. Yeah, yes, she would. <laughs> <you> uh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's life and we uh, and it's, it's the way it is. But uh, no, uh, again, uh, congratulations, uh, Michael. Uh, thank you for all that you have done. Uh, at such a young age already for the Portuguese American experience. It is with people like you that the Portuguese American experience uh, flourishes and, and grows. And of course, thanks to Jackson. And, um, and of course, not just this conversation, but we hope that everything that Jackson has done, including your interview, that we archive it at the, at, at the university because it's something that we must do for, for, for your young son right there, for example, yeah. and for all the others who, who will be able to um, look back, whether it be 20, 30, 40 years from now. So again, thank you. Uh, kudos to you for all you've done. Congratulations to you and your family. And uh, uh, Jackson, of course, you know that uh, we're always grateful for everything that you have done. The book, again, I wanted to share uh, that with everyone. So um, please... Uh, uh, please go to uh, his page and you'll be able to see all of this uh, wonderful stuff that you, he has, uh, everything that he has on the Portuguese community. There's lots of different uh, galleries, pictures on the bullfights, on the festa. Um, remember the book itself. You can uh, 
purchase it here uh, with a as a as a, with a donation and uh, there's a cool uh, their youtube small video on it uh, and if you have any more uh, uh, information that you need uh, please get a hold of me and i'll be more than happy to uh, put you in contact with uh, jackson nichols again uh, thanks to michael lopes thanks to uh, uh, mike uh, jackson nichols and thanks to all of you uh, for being part of this lecture series uh, of the portuguese beyond borders institute on behalf of fresno state thank you all Take care and have a wonderful night. Muito Thank obrigado. You. Thank Boa you. Noite. And if you ever need anything, then you just let me know. And Jackson, you. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Good seeing you, Michael.